to the Gamble Ramble. And if you are a first time uh, attendee, welcome to the Gamble Ramble and thank you for stopping by. This uh, channel is basically a place for me to vlog about my 40 year career in the music industry as a touring recording drummer. And uh, I've played with a number of bands over the years, uh, the capital E and my band Helix and a band in Canada called the Buffalo Brothers and a band called the Joys. I have subbed drums for the Four Horsemen on uh, Def Jam Records. Uh, I play behind Dee Snyder, Lita Ford, Jam with Ace Frehley, done a few things, cool things in my career. We usually we talk about that and we also talk about travel and music. So if you're just joining, thank you. And I want to mention people just joining us because this little channel of mine has taken an incredible amount of leaps and bounds in the last week, not even a week, five, six days. I posted uh, an off-the-cuff vlog about the band from Mexico called The Warning. These three sisters that play incredible hard rock music, and it got an amazing response. And then I did a, a kind of review of, uh, of the drummer, Pow. Thank you, I've been corrected, I used to say Pow. In my defense, I said Pa because you were, the way it's spelled, P-A-U, Paulina. Would, I, you would pronounce it Pa, but I realized they do not call, pronounce her, they call her Paul, Pow, and Pow, and Batman. And um, so now I've been, I've been corrected. Anyway, within these two uh, basic little vlogs off the cuff, unplanned vlogs about the warning, my subscribership went from under 500, I mean 400s, to over 700, which is wild. And if you think about it, four or five days for a small channel. So I sincerely thank all of you that have subscribed. And if this is your first time or you're back for more and you haven't made up your mind yet, could you please do me a favor? Could you please subscribe? Because I'm this close to being able to hit a thousand subscribers, which would allow me to monetize the channel, which would bring a little bit of income in, which I can put into attending things like warning concerts traveling a little, uh, just having a little more uh, accessibility and flexibility for, of things to vlog about. So if you could do that, I'd appreciate it. And if you're already a, a Campbell Ramble subscriber, thank you. Please click like, share, comment below. And uh, I want to start with a comment on the one, the very first warning related vlog I ever posted. The comment is, it's just the channel that talks about how very old people that are fans of The Warning. Fair enough. I guess we could come across that way because I'm 56 years old and I'm certainly not their typical fan base. But it seems to me that they have a very well-rounded fan base. And that came from my posting, The Warning You Need to Hear, which was um, exactly a week ago today. So that's got almost 5,000 views, 4.9 thousand views, which is for a small channel like mine is amazing. So what we're gonna talk about today, in reaction to that comment, no, it wasn't my intention to build a, a, a place where older warning fans can talk about being older and being warning fans. I think music's for everyone, you know, it should be anyway. But I will, say that that comment did make me think, why do older fans like The Warning? And I'll tell you what, that's what we're gonna dive into today. Today's topic is why older fans like The Warning. Okay, so to start with, as I said, thank you, thank you, thank you to The Warning Army. The, the Warning's incredible fan base for even just giving me a bit of their time and coming here. This thing. And your comments have educated me so much, it's unbelievable. Like the things I've learned about this great band. I can't get remember I was just a casual listener, but every time you guys teach me something, I go back and I, I listen to another song and I, and I deep dive for more facts. Just a great, great band. So, why would someone like me, who was born in the 60s, raised in the 70s, started a professional career in the 80s and onward, be into a band of young women in their early 20s, late teens from Mexico? It's a very good question, and I'll tell you why. The first point being, and I've got, I basically made a list of points earlier, I'm only gonna condense it to three major points. The first one is the sound of the band, okay? 
anytime we love any music, it should be first and foremost about the music itself. Stuff that people would call novelties, like, you know, um, age of the artist, uh, uh, ethnicity of the artist. And if that's a, something that it call, you know, draws you in to initially see the band or the, or the, or the gender of the artist, the fact that they're female from Mexico and sisters, whatever, if that's what draws you and that's fine, whatever it takes, but it should be the sound that keeps you. So that's why I think the sound of the band, the music, okay, you gotta look like, yes, they're heavily influenced by 90s, late 2000s bands, like, you know, I can hear Nirvana, Alice in Chains, Muse in their music for certain. But I can also hear a ton of classic rock influences. Now, if you're a younger listener and you don't have a wide palette of, of music listening experience, then you may not recognize, but a lot of what The Warning does is based in bands like Queen, Kiss, ACDC, and even goes far as to say the six, late 60s power trio Cream. The sisters are a power trio. They may not sound like cream per se, but that setup of bass, drums, and guitar is right in line with that. So where you say, oh, you know, you might disagree with me on, on the bands I named, but I'll, I'll go back and explain. Like, we'll start with Queen. Where do I hear the Queen influence in the morning? Harmonies, in particular. These three know how to sing all three of them. So Danny is recognized as the, is basically the lead singer, though they all take turns. And then Pal, Paulina. And then the, the quiet sister on bass, uh, Ale. Did I get it right this time? The Hauriel. Did I get that right this time? Let me know in the comments below. Uh, they all contribute to the vocals, but again, Danny is the major lead singer. What a voice this young lady has. And uh, she's got power and range, and she's got projection. She's got that thing Freddie Mercury had, speaking of Queen. What she sings, you can see it in her eyes. It's almost like watching an opera singer. Like They put across that. It's like, a, like acting with their voice, if that makes sense. Like they, You can put across the emotion. She really puts across the emotion. And the feeling of the, of the music that she's, she's presenting very, very well. It's amazing to watch to me, which is something bands like Queen possess. The bands I grew up loving, arena rock bands. Transference of energy from here, heart, voice, and soul to spreading it out to the audience. Wow, Chef's Kiss again. They've got that. And the harmonies. See, this is something that Queen did. Queen could play the heaviest of heavy riffs. The song is based on heavy riffs, like uh, Stone Cold Crazy, right? And that's like, that's like Black Sabbath area. But then you put Stone Cold Crazy on top of that three-part stacked harmonies. It sweetens it up just a little bit. It's a great formula to have. Who has that formula? The Warning. Amazing, they got this, you know, minor key power riffage going on and then just sweetened with a little bit of, a little bit of that. So there's what they, one thing they have in common with Queen. And another thing I find that they have in common with Queen is the use of pop dynamics in their arrangements. Queen were the, the queens of a uh, of song arrangement in terms of, you know, taking something that might not necessarily be played on radio because it was too heavy or too abstract but arranging it in, in such an appealing way that radio took to it, the average person took to it. Look at Bohemian Rhapsody, okay? Let's, if we're gonna talk about Queen for a second. There's no way that she, song should have ever worked as a single, especially in the 70s of what? Nine to 11 minutes long, whatever it is. All these different movements, like an operata, uh, uh, heavy guitars and, you know, well, I can remember my mother. I remember the seventies when it came out, early seventies. You know, I can't remember my mother. I was just a little boy, but I can remember my Scottish, little Scottish mother. Mama, just killed your man. Doing the dishes and singing along with us on the radio. That's appeal. And I think that the warning have that as well. They have that, you know, the chocolate meets the peanut butter to give you the peanut butter cup, right? The, 
the, the, the heaviness of hard rock that hard rock fans love, authentic hard rock riffage with the sweetness and arrangement of vocals of Queen. And that also brings to mind Alice in Chains. I had a, a comment here from someone that's hopefully a subscriber now. Hint, hint. Subscribe. Subscribe. Um, they said that they had never, when I mentioned that I heard Alice in Chains influence in Powell's drumming, they said that they went back and listened to The Warning with New Year's because they'd never thought of that before. Which is a great compliment, and I hope that I helped maybe change your perspective. But I stand by that. Sean, Sean Kinney from Alice in Chains, great drummer. And a lot of stuff like the song Wood was the example I used in the previous vlog. It's Tom Tom bass. Great groove, right? Pow does a lot of that stuff. You watch her, she loves her toms. And she plays them great. She's got great compositional skills as a songwriter and great compositional skills as a drummer. Her drum parts are composed to be very melodic, cool, and hooky. Not just to drummers, but to, uh, to the average person. So there's another thing that they have in, in common with what Van I mentioned, Alice in Chains. Great wicked harmonies, sweet harmonies over top of just hardcore drop-tuned uh, minor key riffage. Now, the next one I mentioned was, I mentioned Muse, which of course, yeah, you know, uh, I think it's pretty obvious. The girls have been said in a million interviews how much they love Muse, and Muse were a huge influence, their favorite band. Growing up, they toured with them. You can hear it. I don't even think we need to touch on that. The true fans would be the people that are watching us. You already know. You don't need me to tell you. I'm only a casual listener of Muse anyway, so. But you can hear it. It's there, right? Nirvana. You may not agree with me on this, but I hear the strong influence of Nirvana in terms of dynamics of the warnings music, which is, you know, laid back verse and then build up to a crushing chorus where like power switch over to the riding on the crash symbol to build it up and then bring it back down. Now, we know, those of us that are music lovers know that, that Nirvana got that from the Pixies. And so it carries on. The warning, in my opinion, use that as an instrument of their writing as well. That Nirvana based dynamic. And they're also a trio with a compelling front person. So there you go. But before we move on to the next topic, I do want to close out by saying I started going to concerts in 1977 or 78. I was just a little kid. My older brother used to take me. Um, actually, if I could take a second to, on a personal note, uh, it was uh, four years ago, um, sorry, uh, yes, um, yesterday that my brother Jim passed away uh, on the day yesterday. Um, and uh, it actually made me think of him because he took me to my very first concert, which was uh, Cheap Trick and a big Canadian band called the Opening Called Prism. So, um, thank you, Jim. This is for you. Love you. I miss you. Uh, yeah, sorry, it's been five years. Sorry, folks. I got a little off draw. track there for a second. I apologize. A little emotional. But I'm a human being. I'm not a robot, right? This is not AI controlled yet. The gamble ramble. Never will be. So, yeah, Jim used to take me to a lot of reader shows when I was a kid. I was very fortunate to see a lot of 70s bands in, in, in action. And the energy I feel from watching live clips. I have not seen The Warning live, but the live clips of them reminds me of those shows when I was a kid, like a lot of young people getting together and excited about music, you know? And don't you, you gotta admit, right, folks, there's nothing better than a feeling at a concert when the lights go down and you get the goosebumps. Look, my hair is standing on my arms, is standing on that, and just talking about it right now. You know the feeling. And we all collectively let out a scream and it just, here it comes, rock and roll. Nothing better. Okay, so let's move on to reason number two why older fans like the warning. The fan culture based around them. My God, if I haven't experienced this firsthand in the last five days, six days, I don't know who has. The warning army. Like, my little channel has almost doubled in size 
it's more than quadrupled in size, number of uh, hits, views, and comments, but the number of subscribers has almost doubled in a, in a five, six day span because of the war in army. So here's where I can identify with this. I was a massive KISS fan growing up. Um, and I was lucky enough to tour with KISS. I toured with them on the 1995 convention tour. Did nine or 10 shows with them. Matter of fact, I go on something I never normally do. I'll come off break mode here for a second. But you can see me with pictures of me on my wall with Paul Stanley, Gene Simmons, Ace Fraley, and Peter Chris. Uh, I don't normally like to move the camera like that, but it looks like on a little something. Oops. That's uh, part of the topic, and that is the fact that I was a proud, proud member of the KISS Army in the 70s. Like a massive KISS fan. And uh, again, getting to tour with them in 95 was like a dream come true. And also, I've got the privilege of jamming, playing drums behind Ace Fraley at two different occasions, but we'll talk about that in another vlog. The point being, I was a corporal of the KISS Army. Like, I was right in there for life in the 70s in the prime of KISS fame. Now the Warning Army, the name is apt because the devotion I see you fans give to KISS, to, to this eye the Warning, reminds me of the devotion myself and others gave to KISS back in the day. And that is fantastic when you have an unshakable faith in a band, devotion to them, get behind and support the things they do. I, it's a really good call that you guys called yourself the Warning Army because it does remind me exactly of the Kiss Army. And, uh, you know, it's like, like I knew everything about Kiss when I was growing up. I knew their birthdays, I knew their favorite foods, their favorite colors. The Warning Army, Ar Army reminds me of the same. Like, I see the comments you guys leave. And please comment on this below if you, if you care to agree or even disagree. You guys seem to know everything about them, about their, how they grew up and who taught drums to, to POW and, you know, their early contributions to YouTube and so on and so forth. It's really cool. It's like, you know, one woman I've seen, she's in a bunch of The Warnings official tour videos. She's traveled to see them, I think she's at almost 60 times now. She's traveled to South America, North America, Mexico to see the man play. And I don't remember her name, but if you know, you can put it in the comments below, please. That is incredible loyalty. You know, I saw that with KISS fans too. We toured with them. You'd see people coming to multiple cities, spending their hard earned money. And the loyalty has that fan base. The warning has that fan base, sorry, that, that loyalty. Incredible thing. Very much like KISS in the early days. Um, it's funny because, you know, you know, KISS had a thing about a mystique about them. If you weren't there, you, you couldn't experience it first time, but you know when they, what they looked like with their makeup off, and you know, yeah, you felt like you knew them. You knew every little thing about the band, and I get that sense from Warning fans as well. So, we'll close this off with the last thing. Why older fans may like the Warning? They're a power trio, okay? Which, there aren't a lot of these days. Muse is one but they use outside musicians. I say, fair enough. Warning use tracks to build things up. And I think at some point when they're able to afford it, they'll probably add a fourth musician. I don't blame them because you want to sound the best you can for your fans, right? But as a power trio, strictly speaking, you know, Cream, The Police, Nirvana again, some of the greatest bands in rock and roll. Van Halen musically was a power trio. I mean, David Lee Roth was the icing on the cake, but for all intents and purposes, the three of them created the music, right? But let's concentrate on, you know, the cream, the cream references is admittedly a pretty obscure, vague one. For those of you that are older, or younger, or may not know who Cream is, uh, a great band from late 60s, early 70s that featured Eric Clapton. And they had some great classic rock songs, such Johnny Your Love, White Room, which I'm sure if you heard, you would know. So there was a connection between the three of them on stage. You could see it. And I, I believe that the warning has that as well. When you watch them, they're very connected to each other. Yes, they're family, but musically speaking, there's something going on, you know. Uh, and the police had that as well. Uh, but how I would connect the police to the warning more so would be the energy. You could feel the energy with the police had a, or a great energetic power trio. 
It's one of those bands that you watch and you can't believe that that sound is coming from three people. And you can't believe the energy that's hitting you is coming. The police from the prime in the 70s, 80s, that that energy is hitting you with three, just three people, small people standing on stage. The warning have that as well. If you agree or disagree, comment below. Let me know, please, what you think. And lastly, the Nirvana trio comparison. I think it's the same thing that there's the connectedness of players and uh, the dynamic of, of the three of them, you know, being able to bring things down, build it back up, bring it back down. And more importantly too, I can hear it in the songwriting and in the music. You can tell that the 90s were an influence on, on, the, on the sisters, for sure. And I think that Nirvana in particular seems to be a songwriting melody influence. What do you think? Let me know your thoughts. So there you go, that's it for today. We're at the 20 minute point. I do ramble, but hey, it's called the Gamble Ramble. That's my page and I can do what I want with it. So thank you for joining me today. I really do appreciate it. Those are just three of the points of why I think older fans connect with a young band like The, the Warning. They have that arena rock aspect that we all grew up loving. Let me know what you think. Hey, I, you know what? Let me know what you think. If there's any points I missed, put them below. Because I'd, I'd love to learn. I'm here to learn about your favorite band, Warning Army. I want to know. Thank you again for the support. Once again, if you haven't, please, please subscribe. Because I'm so close to being at a thousand subscriber point And being able to monetize my channel to do better things. Uh, like, comment, share. And thank you. Thank you so much. Rock and roll on that party every day.